Hi guys, and welcome to this first lesson in the drum synthesis module. I'm uh, going to walk you through how I make uh, a kick. I'm using kick two for the majority of my drums uh, nowadays, alongside you know acoustic layers and stuff. But um, within this course, I'm going to try and keep it as uh, close to just synths and uh, content that I know you you have access to. So I'm going to try to use Serum, the inbuilt noise generators in there, um, and kick for for the majority of the sounds in the drums. So uh, yeah, this is the kick. Um, I kind of have two main parts. So it's the clicky transient part, which is the, the start of a drum, and it's the body. So here's the body, and here's the, uh, the click. Um, I'm just gonna quickly set up my master. So I always pretty much just use one limiter, nothing else. Um, I will be using span throughout this whole tutorial. Uh, that's kind of my go-to, and if, you don't know what that is? It's a uh, it's a free analyzer from Voxango, and it looks like this. So I'm going to quickly walk you through the settings because they'll be very imp important uh, because I'll be using them, you know, every episode on, on everything really. So uh, its default settings a bit weird. It's not particularly useful. So we're going to go into the uh, settings here and quickly change that. So uh, average time. I want that to react as quick as possible. So if we play the drum again. You can see that's, you know, showing me what's going on a lot quicker. So we have, obviously have volume up the side and left to right is frequency. I'm sure at this level you'll be pretty uh, comfortable with um, frequency analyzers. So range high, I'm going to actually go to uh, plus three. Really loud tunes nowadays. Um, the odd one, the sub actually goes beyond zero here. Uh, I've seen tunes go to plus three, so that's kind of my my extreme my limit in uh, in that direction slope i want off uh slope kind of pretends that higher frequencies are easier, louder than they are and uh, i don't find that very useful so i'm just going to turn it off range low you can probably put to about 56 or so and the uh, frequency range i'm going to leave from 20k 20 hertz to 20,000, which is just a uh, you know our hearing range so let's have a look at kick now the last thing I forgot to change there was the resolution or block size. I'm going to put that to 4,000. Um, 64 is really low. You barely have anything, any detail there. 65,000 is obviously way too much. It takes too long to load and to, to paint the picture. Uh, so I usually use somewhere between 4 and 8. 4 is particularly good for kicks because uh, the quick movement of the, the low end, the kind of like sweep down, is uh, particularly important within kicks. So. That's my span. I'm going to put that down in the corner. I actually have a monitor to my right with it on, but obviously uh, we're only capturing the one screen within this tutorial, so let's just keep that tucked away and ready to look at when, when we want. I'm just going to quickly save this setting. Um, so, BG drum sesh. All right. So let's look at our kick then. It's important to have uh, references. I think that's the, the way in which I've worked um, and progressed the quickest is when I've got good quality uh, tunes or drums and stuff to look at and analyze. Uh, just through experimentation, you find you'll end up with a few good drums in, you know, when you're starting off. And uh, I save those to this folder over time. Sounds 2019 in this case, uh, which obviously has quite a lot in it. Um, but when I'm building a new kick, I like to have a, a reference point. So I know what it looks like in its waveform. I knew, know what uh, frequency ranges it hits. All that kind of thing. So let's look at our reference. You can see that kind of slope down there. The loud transient at the start. It's a little bit more acoustic sounding than uh, our synth one. But still, it's working quite nice. So I'm going to walk you through what I've done with the separate components. I'm going to put the bottom end in yellow and the top end in, uh, in blue. So I'm going to start with the yellow. I'm actually going to rebuild this from scratch. Um, I think it's a slightly better way to learn to kind of walk through the steps rather than work backwards, but I just want to have this set up to begin with as a, as a frame of reference. So, Kick 2 is a really, really nice drum synth. Um, the parts we will be using the most are pretty much just the amp and pitch. Um, and let's just have a look at what our low end's doing. So we're getting a sine wave, 
which is here. I've turned off everything. I've muted all these uh, click modules, which just add in samples and stuff, which are useful for uh, you know making more interesting drums. But we're going to do that in the transient layer rather than with the uh, the low end body part. So this pitch graph is going to control the envelope of the pitch, as you could uh, as you can imagine. Um, the amp is obviously going to control the volume envelope. Um, they can be a little bit confusing. We want to focus on what we're seeing here rather than uh, the actual the, where the nodes are because as you can see I'm telling it to sustain at full volume and then dip off here but the resultant waveform doesn't actually kind of copy that so we're gonna on the amp setting at least bear in mind what's going on here so we want something that is a fairly um, if we look at our reference it sustains at full volume for a short amount of time and then dips off very quickly uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually write in an automation into the kick uh, with like a utility or something to make sure that it's it's only ever going to be as long as I, as I want it to be, something like that. Um, so let's just create a new synth patch then. So if I press Control shift t hopefully I'll get a new MIDI channel. Let's go for kick 2. And let's move somewhere over here. So what key am I using here? G0. Cool, so I'll stretch the MIDI note out longer than it needs to be. Okay. And then as I said, I can draw in the automation. So I'm gonna loop round from before uh, the transient, I guess the start of the sound. Sometimes, uh, as I'm sure you'll have realized, uh, there's a bug with Ableton and most doors where if you haven't uh, rewritten the automation to kind of be at the same point, um, when it loops around sometimes it forgets where it's supposed to be. So uh, I'll quickly describe what that means. So our current chain is just kick two and a utility, which I use all the time. It's just a volume automation. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to try and match the uh, envelope volume-wise of this reference kick. So it's going to die off about here, right? Um, I like to loop before to avoid that automation issue. Cool, so currently with kick two, we've got uh, its stock setting is uh, to have this click on. So I'm gonna turn all those off. This sub control, this sub is, is what we're gonna be using. So that's useful. So it's actually not a bad starting point. So what's happening is, and we can see this graph here, we've got time going along the bottom, frequency going. Um, on the y-axis uh, So it's actually starting from a really high pitch and then sloping down. That's what's going to create this kind of thud and We can see it there if we slow that down a bit So if we move this along here, so the kind of slope is more gradual, you'll see something go ew To exaggerate that I guess we could probably open up that you uh, uh, volume automation a little bit so there we go. That's the basis of a kick, really. It's the sliding down in pitch of a, or in this case, a sine wave, but in the real world, it'd be, you know, different harmonics. So we want that to be a little bit lower. Um, let's shorten our, <clears throat> our envelope back up and uh, get back into kick two then. So we've got this little spike at the front that's going to be creating a, a transient. We don't really need that for this part of the kick because we're going to treat the uh, transient separately so let's maybe reduce that down and uh, we're going to bring this uh, sweep down to be a little bit quicker in uh, in genres like house and techno and stuff often you actually want your kick to be pitched and so to land and settle on a particular note so if I were to extend out this uh, envelope you can hear it kind of settle That's very clearly a do, do, do. In drum bass, it needs to kind of be sweeping for the entirety of its of its life, you know. For all the time that it is, uh, is loud, it needs to be sweeping downward. You don't want to really hear it settle on a note. So I'm going to kind of keep playing with it until I get this kind of both the visual that I'm used to seeing and the kind of uh, thumpy kick that I'm used to hearing. That's not actually that far off. So that's starting a little too high. Um, 
let's bring this down then. So that's sounding pretty good. Me, uh, let's change the low point. That's sounding pretty good. I'm liking the sound of that. What we can do at this point is exaggerate the uh, frequency area that we like. So I'm going to use Pro-Q2. This is my kind of go-to EQ. You can use any though. So we're going to exaggerate kind of 60 hertz. That's generally where drum bass kicks it. Just to quickly go through my limiting settings, actually. Pro-L is set to uh, punchy mode, look ahead, off, attack all the way up, release all the way down. Nothing else going on. Uh, that just allows for the loudest drums that I've found without chopping off any transient information. So that's a pretty great low end, actually. Sometimes what I'll do to it is distort it, get a second harmonic in there for some real loudness, because this is actually not a complete saw wave. You can see it actually squares for short, short amounts of time, which uh, if you think about the fact that a signal is, uh, this is like plus one and this is minus one, the, the times at which it's at full uh, volume are these ones. So, you know, if you imagine a square wave to be the loudest possible sound where it goes from full plus one to full minus one, you kind of want to square off your wave a little bit to get some more, uh, some loudness. Uh, so we can do that with some distortion, but for, for now, I'm pretty happy with that as a, as a low end layer. So we can either bounce that or leave it in MIDI. I do like to bounce quite a lot of time, so let's just quickly render that into audio. So we've got BG drum synthesis lesson kick V1. So I tend to bounce out quite a few different variations when I'm doing my drum sessions. Um, but for now, this is uh, that's perfectly good. So let's import it in as audio. Looking good. So yeah, it's got the same envelope as the, as the kind of the reference kick. Um, we could definitely go a little bit louder with it, but for right now, it's fine. So let's move on to the transient section. So I'm going to bring this guy over and just see what they sound like together straight away. So turn off everything we don't need. Let's color coordinate this so it's less confusing. So low end elements I'm going to put in yellow, and transients can be in blue. This reference we're going to put in some purple or something. So we're not really using this right now. Let's maybe, I like to slide over and kind of move down and to the right in my projects as I go forward, just to keep things uh, kind of, I don't know, organized in some way. You can also, when you open up the project, you can kind of see the progression of the sound as you go. All right, so let's leave that a bit quicker. It's not, not a bad kick at all, really. Uh, phase alignment is extremely important when making drums, so you'll see me uh, either using this free plugin called Sound Delay, again from Voxango, um, where you can just slightly move sounds. So I'll exaggerate it. So currently it's playing bare. Let's move it loads. You can hear a big delay on that now. So if I were to render that out, it would. Uh, you can see here probably be fairly delayed so now it's over there so that's when you're using the, the times 100 and this is in uh, milliseconds I think so you can imagine that if I'm using it in the uh, the smaller regions what you're doing is just slightly slightly moving the sound to the left and right uh, the alignment of these squiggles on top of each other are super important for uh, for good drums so if you see me wiggling stuff around you know why so I'm gonna try that with this just to see if uh, a bit of wiggling is going to make this the two kind of marry together better. Like it sounds fine already, but it just doesn't have that perfect timing, I don't think. So the smaller increments to the right here, the larger ones are over here. So I'm going to try maybe this one. I go until it's obviously too far and then kind of run it back. Okay, so now they're definitely not aligned. So let's bring it in. Cool. So let's make our own uh, transient layer then. 
So that's a good start point. Um, let's remove that and uh, get a new kit two in there. Cool. So I'm going to use that utility trick then to make sure it doesn't last any longer than I want it to. This is just a very short, snappy layer. Okay, so we're just kind of trying to create this little section here. So in our reference, it sounds like... So by itself, it's not going to sound very good. Um, but with everything else, it hopefully, we'll give the drums some punch. So I'm going to create a MIDI region. And uh, stretch this bad boy out. Transient layer in blue this time. A light blue. Cool, so... Kick 2 and a utility. So currently, it's just... A little click because the default one comes up with this these click things on so I'm gonna turn them all off uh, and just play with the pitch for now the amp by default on kick 2 actually comes with a little ramp up here um, which again is not actually completely aligned to the time frame as you can see it, it's affecting this area here not actually waiting until this millisecond amount to, to turn on um, I'm gonna take that off because it produces a nice click Let's play with the pitch. So that's getting to something I quite like. I, I like to do the, uh, if you hold right click, you can curve these shapes. Um, and at this point, it's just kind of doing it to taste, really. Uh, I know that this sine wave is at a really high point then, and it's pitching down really quickly, and that's uh, creating a nice drum transient. Beyond that, I'm pretty much using my ears and uh, just kind of trial and error to find a nice sounding click. So that's already working quite well. Possibly a little, a little too much top end on that one. So let's get Pro Q3. That sounded pretty good. Okay, so in a real drum, there's lots more than just the click and the body. There's all kinds of noise and other layers. We want to create a little bit of that so it's not completely synthetic. As you can hear, that's got some like some room in it. So if we get rid of the transient and maybe the uh, the bottom end, we can hear what's actually going on with the rest of it. So if we even were to add in that, let's say, so I'll duplicate this. So this one can be our original unedited reference. And this can be our new kind of noise layer, which we will create in kick two, but I just want to kind of demonstrate how, how important these things are. So let's turn that on. Just a little kind of note, I guess this, uh, some people, there's certain types of drum and bass where that, that kind of kick is actually all that you would want. Um, but yeah, I like to take it a little bit further and put it slightly more into the realm of realism. Uh, but it's totally dependent on, you know, your style and the style of the track in question. So there's some really loud thing going on somewhere. It's this thing. I'm just going to turn that down. I think there's some sort of low end happening here. Let's have a look at the amp. Okay, perhaps it's best to bounce out at this point to avoid any sort of random stuff happening. That is the beauty of bouncing to audio. You know exactly what's gonna happen. So I'm just gonna put in brackets here, transient layer. And then we have that kind of locked in. It's not gonna change or create any weird sounds for us. keep the color coordinations you know um, okay so let's use this kick layer then to let's just make a new instance uh, kick to the space um, again so the automation wants to stay there uh, and probably get rid of that so let's see what kind of uh, other layers we can throw in there so let's turn off the sub we want one of these click layers on so let's solo this click one 
Um, I think if we go to reverb, there's some interesting samples that we can play here. So this, uh, we actually want to change the decay a little bit. So if we think about, we're trying to achieve something like that, right? So if we bounce you out, kick, noise, and verb. You wouldn't really think that a, a bass drum wants any reverb on it, but uh, completely dry kicks sound a little bit weird to me. So, well, certainly in, in settings where the, the snare and stuff and hats have a little bit of room to them, it can be a little bit odd. So, kick, noise, and verb. So we're looking to create something that sounds and looks like that. So we're going to mute that for now. Sounded pretty good. I don't want any transient confliction, so I don't want any, any overlapping sounds at the start of the drum. Um, that's a recipe for a kind of pretty weird transient. Um, I like to keep it quite uh, clinical and clean in that way. I can play with the pitch of it here. So I think it's got a little bit too much kind of uh, low mid stuff going on. So just open up our EQ. Sound pretty, pretty damn good actually. Uh, the beauty of making and saving all these kicks is that you can then use any part of them as, as layers for a new kick. So I don't usually, you know, do a, a completely new kick from scratch. I'll I'll know that I've got good layers in other in other kicks that I can pitch up and down and use transients from one and the body of a next and all that kind of thing. So let's render this together then. <clears throat> so V four. As you can see, I'll just quickly show you through my like my uh, process. I've got like I've done some drum sessions in the last few days, and I've got various you can hear the different iterations as I kind of go through because not every decision you make is actually beneficial um, sometimes you mess it up a little bit and uh, the sound gets worse so it's nice to have the the previous versions there as well often I'll be making saves during the uh, process as well um, to be able to come back to stuff okay so we actually have a damn good kick. Let's uh, import it in and look at it and then compare it to our reference. I really like that. I think maybe the uh, the reference kick has got a little bit more weight to it. Um, as you can see here, there's some section of the sound that's not completely maxed out and as I said we want a little bit of squaring going on so I'm going to do a little technique uh, to get some more punch out of it so I'm going to move it over here again just for kind of visually to keep it quite simple I want to be able to hone in and uh, kind of focus my mind purely on that drum bring the reference over as well maybe create some channels in between top and bottom there we go uh, okay Oops, let's put you kind of up here somewhere. All right, so we've got our, this is the drum we're working on in red. Okay, so I want to split the frequency uh, spectrum into two parts. Uh, the kind of the lows, everything below a certain point and everything above it. So I've got this little rack that I use all the time. Um, and I'll quickly make it with you guys and we'll be using it in pretty much all the course. So. Uh, it's it's useful to have. There's I'll show you how to do it in Pro Q too, and there's a version that you can if you don't have Pro Q for whatever reason, um, you can use EQ8, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's not as accurate. So it's a it's a low end splitter with a macro control. So so that's a kind of like a low pass, and this is a a high pass. Um, so let's quickly build that. So, Pro Q2. So we want linear phase mode on first of all. Uh, that that's the accuracy issue I was talking about with uh, EQ8. Um, 
when you split it, you don't actually get complete phase alignment, phase alignment, sorry, between the top and bottom layers. Uh, so, and that can be kind of important. So I've got a low pass to 150 hertz, 36 dB slope. Um, and the important thing is just that all the settings are the same. So I'm going to group that up and double it. This could be my low chain. This could be my high chain. So on the high, then we're going to change that to a low cut. And then we should have something that actually affects the audio in no way because we've got both the low and the high. Uh, that macro control is pretty useful. So I'm going to wiggle this around. Uh, and then this, this drop down box uh, allows me to, it kind of brings up the para parameter you moved the last uh, most recently. So I'm going to assign that to macro one in the group. So that's currently controlling the low component. So then go to the high, do the same thing, wiggle the parameter. It'll be in this drop down box now. And I'm going to assign that to the same thing. So if we look at the top and bottom, they should move uniformly. Perfect. Um, so in EQ8 then, it's the same exact thing really. We want a uh, one of these. Let's try and get it a little bit steeper. So four times low pass. That's going to be to macro one. And then we copy that, and paste it there. Let's call that high again. And we're going to change that to a turn that frown upside down and then obviously assign that frequency to A as well. So that should be doing the same thing. Cool. So I actually prefer using the pro Q type um, and I'm going to use a free clip to square the bottom end off a little bit um, and add some, some weight to it. We want a little bit of that going on. It's just going to help our kick punch through mixes a lot easier. Um, so I'm just going to get this out of the way. So yeah, let's get the free clip up then. So it's default settings to a hard clipping and I'm just going to push the gain up a little bit. Let's isolate that low end. So that's uh, creating quite a lot of nasty harmonics that we don't want. Uh, and to kind of Rectify that, I'm just going to put the same EQ that I had before on again. I might turn that down a little bit, it might be pushed a little too loud. So on the second EQ, I'm just putting the output level down by a dB. That's really added a lot of weight. Let's uh, have a look at that waveform then. That's beautiful. So let's zoom in on that guy. As you can see, we've got some nice squaring going on there, which means that we've maximized our, our drum a little bit. You could even, uh, if you were really wanting that transient to pop, draw in an automation to kind of fix that, but we could even try that um, just with a utility. See if that's made any difference. There's a final kind of final render. It's already a very good kick to understand. I'd be happy to use that in a tune. Uh, and you get to know the kind of waveform you're looking at, but, um, and what's going to pop through and mix nicely. Yeah, that looks looking good. There you have it. So that's our kick synthesis. Um, next up is snares.